Today on Questions, crank up the Chris Tomlin because we're talking about worship and prayer. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Questions. If you haven't watched the previous episodes, what this is is you have questions beyond theology, philosophy, spirituality, religion, what have you, things of depth, things of meaning. We have answers, albeit probably unsatisfactory ones. You can always be reaching out and asking us more questions either on our Instagram at the Co Mutual or on my personal YouTube at Brennan Johnson. And so let's dive in for today. This is uh, episode 11. So the question for today is, are there things outside the norm that can bring us to God, not prayer and worship? So I'm really not sure how to answer this other than to say yes and no, because do I believe that there are ways that we can reach God with something other than, you know, getting down on our knees, closing our eyes, folding our hands together, and saying the Lord's Prayer. Absolutely, I believe that. Mainly because I've never done that once in my life. Do I believe that there are ways to reach out to the divine that go beyond standing in a room with a bunch of other people while we sing How Great Is Our God out of tune? Or, you know, if you go to a different church uh, singing something like Guide Me, O Thou Great Jehovah. Absolutely I do. I absolutely believe that that is true. You know, Similarly to what I've said in previous videos, when we, when we talked about the point of church and can church look different or what's the point of church, the way that churches do things today, the way that people reach out to the divine today, the way that people call out to, to the creator, the, the end all be all of, of purpose and meaning, the way that people reach out to something higher than themselves, it's not the way that people have always done it in the past. And it is not the way that people will continue to do it in the future. The way people have reached out to God has looked different and will look different. And I don't, I think that's a good thing. If, if you're out in nature and you're marveling at the creativity of it all, why shouldn't that count? You find yourself meditating more often. You know, why shouldn't that count? I believe there are an infinite amount of ways that we can reach out to the Creator, that we can bring ourselves before God before the divine that don't look anything like what you see on Sunday mornings all across North America. My asterisk to that though would be that I don't know if you can't call any of that prayer or worship. Uh, you, know, you know, I know that prayer and worship can kind of be these charged words, and if those words don't work for you, find other words. Because if you strip away the words themselves to what these words mean, what is worship other than an intense form of, of, of thanks and awe at something? What is prayer other than conversation and contemplation? So if you are doing something that brings you thanks and awe at something larger than yourself, at, at, at the supernatural, at the spiritual, at the, at the divine level, why isn't that also worship? But again, strip worth the word worship away. If, if you are doing things where you feel like you are speaking to something greater than yourself, if you are seeing things or communicating or hearing things or, or, or something inside of you feels like you are having a conversation with not just yourself, why can't that be prayer? But again, if prayer is charged, strip the word prayer away. Worship is just thanks and awe. Prayer is just is just conversation and contemplation. So, you know, I have had moments in my life where where I have, and they've been few and far between, I'll admit, where breathing 
has felt like worship to me. Like I'll suddenly really notice the breath in my lungs and I'll go, holy crap, I'm alive. I'm alive, I am living, I am conscious, I am here right now in this place. And there was a point in time when I wasn't and there will be a point in time when I won't be. I am here right now. And right now is a gift. And even if you don't believe in a higher power, I think you can still appreciate the fact that you are here right now, that every breath that you take is not a breath that was promised to you. And so I've had those moments where I'm just, I'm just floored and I'm flabbergasted at the fact that I'm alive right now, that my heart is continuing to beat, that I am here on this earth when I am then that looks nothing like being in a church service on a Sunday morning singing a Chris Tomlin song. You know, in the last year or so, I've tried to be more intentional about how I pray and what prayer means to me. And a lot of what it looks like now is, I would call it closer to actually meditation. I, I, I haven't been able to do it a lot in the last few weeks because things have been so hectic and busy. But something I really try to do on a semi-regular basis is light some incense, play some wordless uh, kind of soothing, calming music. I actually, I really prefer lo-fi jazz. I find classic meditation music is just a little too boring and I'll be falling asleep. But if I, yeah, playing some music that isn't going to be a distraction, but isn't going to put me to sleep, and I'll put it on in the background and I'll light some incense. And the incense is just to kind of try and separate the room I'm in from being the normal space where I'm in it every day and I'm doing whatever I'm doing. You know, like if I'm in my living room, separating it from, oh, it's just my living room, to the smell attaches me to this is something different. The music attaches me to this is something different. The space has changed. The space is now sacred. If that word is, you know, if you can accept that word. The, the, the room has been set apart. Um, you know, people would call that holy to be set apart, but Again, I know that Christian terms can be a little charged, but it, it, it becomes set apart. The room, I try and make this space different than just my everyday use of it. And then I will just sit and I will close my eyes again, just to keep myself from being distracted. And all I'll really do is, is, is say to myself or say to God, you know, what do you have for me? And then I'll just, be silent. I won't be praying actual word. You know, I won't be speaking. I won't be having a conversation. I'll just say, what do you have for me? And then my mind will wander. And skeptics would call it my psyche, my intuition, my, my psychology. And mystics would call it, you know, the divine, the, 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 the source, the engine, the spark, the universe, God the creator. I don't know why it can't be both entwined working together, but more often than not, my brain, my thoughts, my mind will hit something. And that thing will be meaningful. Sometimes it is a, a wrong word, a wrong action that I, I realize I need to correct. I need to apologize. I need to seek forgiveness or I need to give forgiveness to someone who has wronged me, who is clearly sorry for it, and I just haven't allowed that sorrow and forgiveness to touch my heart. Sometimes it will be something I want to do, something I need to do. It'll be a desire, it'll be a call to action, it'll be starting the co-mutual. It's, it's, it's something like that. And so the, the most, beneficial, the most meaningful, the most powerful moments of my life have been when I have been worshiping and it looks nothing like worship on a Sunday morning. And it's been when I have been praying and that prayer looks nothing like a, a prayer to uh, God in a, in a classical sense. So are there, are there ways to reach out to God like that, 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 that are, there, are there things outside of the norm that can bring us to God that aren't worship and prayer? 
Yes and no. There are things outside the norm that can bring us to God, but I would argue that those things are still worship and prayer. They can just be worship and prayer in ways that look nothing like worship and prayer. There can be thanks, there can be awe, there can be conversations, there can be contemplation, there can be meditation, there can be calls to action, there can be relationships getting deeper, and every all of it, everything can be divine and can be spiritual and can be so supernatural. And it looks nothing like what our parents or their parents or, or what Christians or what anyone in any religion has been doing in their formal institutionalized religious services for the last thousand years. All of that to say, don't shy away from things that bring life. Don't shy away from things that bring growth, that challenge, that bring you to that thing, that, 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 that divinity, that, that creator, that spark, that engine. Don't shy away from that. Even if it doesn't seem like what those who are fully committed to the institution says is normal, I don't believe in a creator. I don't believe in a divine being who sets harsh requirements for being met. You know, if you look at the Judeo-Christian scriptures, there is a God who sometimes meets people by just speaking, sometimes meets people in a burning bush, is sometimes a whisper, is, is sometimes a giant pillar of fire and then a pillar of, of wind and a God who, who comes in the form of a dove, a God who does not say you do A and you do B and the result is me, but says there, there is a, a near infinite list of where I'm willing to go to meet with you because that, that creator is always seeking to, to meet with you. The idea that you have to go somewhere to meet with God is kind of ridiculous. God's coming to meet with you. So, yeah, that is what I have for you. I feel like the endings of these always get really messy and kind of spiral into ramblings, but I hope this was beneficial. I hope this was helpful. Like always, we are continuing to go through questions. You can always be reaching out, always be asking more questions. We have a long list. We're working our way through them. If you have any comments or anything else on today's questions, you know, we can always continue the conversation. Like I've said in previous videos, we never seek to be the final word. We are always seeking to be the first word, the spark that creates a conversation. We're not trying to tell you what to think. We're just trying to put up the first word to engage in a conversation. So we'd love to hear your thoughts. Thank you so much. Grace, peace, cheers.